Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Dishman Carbogen MX Limited Q2 FY22 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mark Griffiths, Global CEO. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks very much, moderator. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we at Dishman Coverage and Ansys Limited hope you and all your family are safe and well. Um, I'm going to give a short introduction and then I'll hand over to uh, Hashir Dalal, our, our, our uh, CFO. So we've had a solid performance this quarter. The key highlights are a, a successful completion of an FDA audit for a uh, confidential client's launch in November 21 of a lung cancer indication uh, at one of our Swiss sites. Commercial supply is going out of for the India operation. So, uh, you know, as you would have seen in the previous quarters, because of the fixed cost burden and lower sales in India, uh, the EBITDA margin was uh, kind of negative. So uh, since we were able to supply a good amount of uh, orders in this particular quarter and produce uh, a good amount of inventory as well, uh, obviously that had a positive impact on the, on the overall gross margin. Uh, plus we also had a positive impact because of the uh, foreign exchange gains uh, on, because of the exchange rate fluctuation. So all these three put together uh, resulted into about the 90% cross margin. But if you see for the first half, uh, you know, it is close to about 17%. So I, I would say for the full year, we should be anywhere between 17 to 19%. Okay. So this will be uh, still better than, uh, a bit better than what we have been doing uh, in the past. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so you said how many validation projects have been executed? I missed that number. Three, three this year so far, and another two um, are planned to be complete before the end of this fiscal year. Uh, pardon, how many? Two more before the end of the fiscal year. Three so far. The best it's the best the company has ever done. Okay, so uh, generally during validation uh, stages, the gross margin is higher. Is is what I understand. Yes. So should yes. Uh, uh, so Q3, Q4 is also uh, could there could there be a chance we should see higher gross margins in subsequent quarters also? That's that's our hope. Okay. okay. And uh, with respect to the deferral of shipment from Switzerland uh, to Q3. Uh, what uh, so had that not happened, we would have been flat. Uh, why? Why? Uh, no. Uh, so then the revenue would have shown a further increase. So that was a shipment of about uh, 3.8 million Swiss francs, uh, which has now happened in October. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, with, res uh, with respect to India cranks, how many molecules are we currently uh, commercializing? So we had about uh, four or five large commercial molecules. So how many are yeah. we are we currently doing? Uh, I would say except for one or maximum two, we are, we are now manufacturing uh, almost all of the molecules. Uh, so the shipments would happen uh, in, in the later part of this year as well as during the course of the next financial year. Got it. Thank you. Uh, I'll join back to you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Vishal. Participants who would like to ask questions, please press star, then one. The next question is from the line of Satish Bhatt from Anvil Shares. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations on the decent set of numbers, Mark. And I think uh, the way the company is uh, shaping up in terms of, I think, uh, the pipeline. Can you throw some light on uh, how has been the pipeline update during this quarter? And how do you see that uh, uh, things commercializing for us in the next one or two years, you know? You even said that you had already applied for the patent for your vitamin D uh, analog. 
you could throw some light on that how far we are from the commercialization of that thing you know yeah sure so in terms of the crams pipeline globally um Bava's getting back on its feet now, which is uh, which is tremendously exciting for all of us, and and the folks there have done a tremendous amount of work to turn around the situation there, and that can only get better. And as that capacity comes online, that that really helps the entire organisation. That's the first thing to say. Secondly, the market itself is extremely strong and remains strong, and I've been pretty consistent about this message over the last year or so that the market remains strong. Inquiries are still coming in and inquiries for both parts of our platform in Europe and in India. So um, we're, we're very uh, encouraged by that. So that means that you know, we have opportunity in the market. Competition is strong, but uh, customers still want what we provide. And that's a really, uh, a really good thing to do. The pipeline continues to get replenished as things go through validation and get commercialized. We have a, 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 an early phase pipeline, preclinical phase one and phase two, which is still very strong. Um, you know, with, a, with in, in preclinical phase one and phase two, probably something approaching 80 to 100 molecules. Um, and those will, you know, the fallout rate is a lot higher, as you will appreciate. But, um, but a number of those will fructify over the next two or three years into uh, late phase three and, uh, and validation projects. And then, of course, the dropout rate is, is lower. By the time you get to that level, uh, the dropout rate is significantly lower. So as I said earlier with the previous question, we've never done five validations in one year out of Europe ever. Well, as far as I know, and I've been in the company for 21 years. And we've never done five validations in, in one fiscal year. It's remarkable. It's absolutely remarkable. And, and it plays to the strength and the work that we did four to five years ago in building that pipeline and really focusing on the early phase because these projects are starting to fruitful and you know. So um, with five projects going into a completing validation this year, we hope, that means we've got at least another one, potentially two FDA audits. Um, we've already had two this year, which we've successfully passed. Um, it's, it's difficult to say exactly what that will, will turn out in terms of revenue, um, because we don't know when the customers are going to be launching. We don't know uh, how, much, how successful they're going to be in the market. But the one that we've just passed the FDA audit for is a multiple indication drug for a Japanese customer. And the indication we've just been validated for by the FDA um, was for another indication for that drug. So that could be, could be massive for us, could be massive for us. Um, but as you know, we're, we're cautious about giving you know, predictions when we're not in control of the process, uh, the customers are. As it relates to the vitamin D analogs where we are in control, the patents, so we've been talking about filing those patents. They've been filed. They've been accepted. They've now been published. That's the latest news. Um, they are now open for challenge, of course. Um, in the meantime, we've uh, shipped our product to the clinic for the, uh, the research COVID trial. If that is successful over the next, say, three to six months, then we will start to look at our commercial strategy for that product. And I would say that we'd be looking to commercialize within the next 18 to 18 months to two years, realistically, uh, with that product. Um, and there are a number of other vitamin D analogs which we're looking at at a much earlier research stage. And again, we've been consistent about putting some investment into research and development on our product business. Uh, such that we can continue to strengthen the pipeline of our own products. And we see that combination of being a product company, but also having service insulating the organization from the vagaries of the market. So uh, I think we're, but we're all very comfortable at a management level that we're, we're putting some effort into our products as well, which we haven't, frankly, put a lot of effort in. We've put a lot of effort into service to grow to where we are, and products are now becoming very important to us as well. So it's a multi-arm strategy. We'll always be a crams company, though, that, that being said. 
Uh, Ashir, is there anything you'd like to add to that from a forecast perspective? No, I think, uh, Mark, you've covered pretty much everything. So overall, uh, if we take a three-year perspective, you know, things really look, um, you know, very exciting for all of us. And uh, that is on the back of the molecules that we have in phase three. So as you would have seen, uh, possibly that last quarter, we had about 15 in late phase three. Those have increased to about 18. So we have added three more uh, in late phase three. And uh, with, the, with the French expansion very much on track, and also for the ADC molecule that we are undertaking in Switzerland, I think all of that should, uh, should come to fruition in the next uh, two to three years' time. Uh, you know, that's when we'll be starting to realize substantial revenue from this project. So overall, the outlook looks uh, pretty good, uh, and that is what uh, we have discussed internally as well. Thanks. And, and just one thing to remind everybody, when we look at these molecules, it's, it's a 10-year process from discovery to commercial. That follows on from a, a successful paper audit by the FDA uh, earlier on in the year. We continue to have excellent progress on the rebirth of our Bavla location in India, and uh, we have continue to uh, supply customers with product, and uh, we continue to open new facilities, or reopen facilities, and uh, bring our products back onto the line. The construction of our new commercial facility for formulation in France is on target, and the facility looks fantastic, and we're uh, really, really looking forward to marketing efforts have already commenced. The commercial pipeline remains very strong, and the market remains very active. Ongoing validation activity is high, with three completed this year so far, and two more targeted for late fiscal year 21-22 one in antiviral for bone marrow transplants and the other for multiple myeloma. Our uh, activities in vitamin D analogs is continuing. Um, our patent has now been filed and it's been published. Uh, we now are waiting for a period of time for any challenges as is normal for any patent application. And the drug product that was manufactured in India for the uh, research and development clinical trial against uh, COVID is now with the uh, clinic that is uh, going to commence the uh, clinical trial in this next quarter. With that, what I'd like to do is to hand over to Mr. Hashil Dalal, our CFO, and uh, he'll give you some of the financial highlights. Over to you, Hashil. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, hello, everybody. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, regarding the financials for the, for the quarter ended September 2021, uh, we would like to state that this was a pretty good quarter for us, uh, especially from a margin perspective. And this was driven largely by uh, the resumption of, of production and sales of certain molecules from, from the Indian operations, as well as solid growth shown by uh, our Netherlands business, our vitamin D business, as well as uh, from Carbogenesis Argate. So the revenue from operations for the quarter stood at uh, 459 crores as compared to 439 crores in the comparable quarter last year, which is a growth of about 4.5%. Uh, the costs uh, came in at around uh, 9%, uh, which obviously is not sustainable. Um, our, our average costs uh, for, the, for the full year are close to about 18 to 20%. Uh, but this quarter was pretty good because we did realize good amount of gains on certain commercial products. The employee expenses for the quarter stood at 235 crores. Uh, this is in line with uh, what we had in the previous quarter. EBITDA for the quarter stood at about 99 crores, which represents about 21.6% margin on the revenue from operations. Uh, depreciation and amortization was pretty much in line with, uh, with the previous quarter. Finance costs, including the forex impact, uh, stood at about 13.69 crores. Uh, we had a small exceptional item where uh, we had written down the value of certain old inventory, which was no longer usable for certain projects. So that was to the tune of about two and a half crores. This all resulted into a profit before tax of uh, 18.59 crores. Uh, the tax expense was at about 7.4 crores. 
uh, it does appear a bit higher this quarter, largely because uh, at, at the India standalone level, we had received certain dividends from from the subsidiary. Uh, while the dividend gets knocked off, but the tax expense is something that remains on a consolidated basis. And uh, this resulted into a profit after tax of uh, of about 11 crores. Uh, as far as the performance of the uh, of, of the various segments is concerned, uh, Cramps India did a revenue of uh, 39 crores uh, for the first half. This translated into 71 and a half crores. Um, Cramps Switzerland, France, and China cumulatively did a revenue of 282 crores, as compared to 319 crores in the comparable quarter last year. We had uh, one particular shipment uh, which actually got deferred to Q3 of the financial year at Carbogenansis uh, AG, because of which uh, you know it kind of shows a decline as compared to last year's same quarter. But otherwise, it was a solid performance by uh, the, the Swiss entity. Grants UK reported a revenue of 33 crores as compared to 27 crores in the comparable quarter, uh, which is a 20% growth. Carbogenansis BB on the marketable molecule side did, uh, I mean, it was again a fantastic quarter for, for uh, the Netherlands business. Did a revenue of uh, 71 crores as compared to 52 crores in the comparable quarter. And this results into about 36% growth. Uh, as we saw in the first quarter, they did a growth of about 60%. So the cholesterol and uh, Vitamin D analogs business uh, remains extremely strong for us. Uh, the other segment, which uh, predominantly includes our traditional businesses, which are the quartz, intermediates, BTCs, uh, disinfectants, etc., uh, that did a revenue of 33 crores as compared to 35 crores in the comparable quarter last year. From from a, a margin perspective. Uh, you know, we are finally report uh, positive with the, at the Cramps India level, uh, thanks to all the efforts that are being put in for the resumption of operations in India. So Cramps India delivered a 22% EBITDA margin. Uh, Cramps Switzerland, uh, France, China put together, again, delivered a solid uh, 20%, 20.5% EBITDA margin. Cramps UK, uh, did a margin of 24%. Uh, on the marketable molecule side, Carbogenensis BV uh, had, a, had another strong quarter with 31.7% uh, EBITDA margin. And uh, the other segment uh, did an EBITDA margin of 7%. Um, so, you know, these, these were more or less the financial highlights uh, for the quarter. Uh, overall, we do expect, as we had mentioned in the last call as well, uh, the India operations will will sequentially keep on showing a good amount of growth, and uh, we expect to be back on track as far as the production is concerned out of the India facilities, especially Pavla, uh, to be uh, more or less back to what it was pre-COVID levels by Q4 of this financial year. I think with that, uh, moderator, we can uh, open the floor for Q and A. Or Sanjay, if you have any any final comments, uh, you know, um, Harshil, you have summed up. The only one or two very quick observations, as you would have seen. Uh, I think um, most of the units, the major units of Bavla, have started operations in this quarter, and uh, I think seven, six or seven key operative units have already started production. And I think by Q3 end we should be able to make Bavla absolutely back to normal. So I think from Q4 of the current fiscal, we should see the normal run rate coming in Bavla and uh, most of the key customers having already completed or about to complete their re revised uh, risk assessment processes. And even the com compliance is from an EDQM standpoint getting hopefully over by end of Q3. Uh, and as Mark explained, all the pipeline projects appear to be very, very strong and going very satisfactorily. So I think let's let's open the house for Q&A. Sure, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star, then one on the touchstone telephone. 
If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star, then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star, then one. Anyone who wishes to ask questions, please press star, then one. The first question is from the line of Vishal Manchanda from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, just wanted uh, some understanding on the gross margin expansion. Uh, so, 90% during the quarter. Is this on account of some validation projects uh, being executed during the quarter? Well, yeah, I mean, it's on account of uh, two things. One, uh, uh, well, actually three things. One is obviously validation of uh, certain projects uh, that, that were undertaken during the quarter. Uh, plus, there were also uh, commercialization on average. So when, and forgive me, when we talk about quarter-on-quarter -quarter performance, you know, we're talking about a business where our customers are coming to us you know, somewhere between eight and nine years before there's a chance of commercialization. So sometimes things move fast. Um, but generally speaking, you know, things don't change remarkably on a quarter by quarter basis. What happens is if you look over a year or an 18 month period of the performance of the business, you see this consistent growth in the pipeline. And the pipeline is what's going to sustain this business long term. So what we have to do is we've focused on the late phase pipeline. That's now through bringing to fruition the revenue and, 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 and the customer relationships, we hope. What we're now doing is starting to focus a bit more on our early phase pipeline again because we've got to keep that machine moving. And, and that's really where we see the opportunities now. And Babla has a very important role to play in that, of course, uh, and is playing a, an important role now, providing intermediates and starting materials for some of our commercials out of Switzerland, but we're also uh, generating interest with the Babler capabilities with other customers that we've never worked with before. So we're actually working with a customer at the moment to pull some quotations together for some interesting molecules out of Babler, and we've never worked with them before. So uh, there are opportunities out there, and the market is strong. So that's the message I'd like to give, give everybody. Uh, sir, uh, just uh, today you have given uh, one press release regarding your, uh, your European supplier uh, taking uh, batches of your drug, you know, for uh, further validations in the cancer things. So can you just throw some light to that? Are we any financial partner with that uh, company or just we are a cramps player? No, we have no financial. We are a service provider to them. We are a selected service provider. They're a Japanese customer. Uh, we have got a, um, an arrangement with them where they're co-investing in some additional capacity for their molecule in Switzerland, and uh, that investment Mark, is about Mark, I think, you, I think uh, Sadish Bhai is talking about uh, you know, the, the French one that we announced today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We're a service provider for them. Same message. We're a service provider. Um, we've been working on that molecule. We used to make the API um, many years ago, um, but for certain capacity reasons, they moved that API to another supplier. Um, but we're now manufacturing drug product for them for their clinical phase three trials. And we're a service provider to them. At the moment, we're the only service provider who are manufacturing the drug product. And sir, uh, what's the update on your... Uh the ADC joint uh, the joint manufacturing which is uh, how the how are the things going on that front you know bring through some light on that how we are going to see uh, the actual well, commercialization yeah. from that plant you know yeah there hasn't been a huge amount of um, progress from last quarter uh, we're still we've we've completed the validation the customer's going through his filing process now uh, he's also going through some licensing um, processes to license the drug or the, uh, the, the technology to some other partners. Um, and we continue to make um, phase three uh, batches. So uh, that's moving forward. We don't believe that they're going to do their full application before the end of this fiscal year, but 
again, we don't have a huge amount of, uh, of detail at the moment. They're a relatively small company, and they they are partnering. That's what they're trying to do right now, is to uh, is to partner with some other organisations for that molecule. But clinically, the molecule shows really good efficacy. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Thanks for the question. Sorry, I misunderstood your first, second one. <laughs> Thank you. Participants to ask a question, please press star, then one. Anyone who wishes to ask questions, please press star, then one. The next question is from the line of Vishal Manchinda from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Uh, I, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, on the marketable molecule front, uh, is there any benefit that you are currently drawing because of uh, vaccines? Because what I understand is RNA vaccines use cholesterol as an input and the benefit might fade away going forward. Um, we've had some discussions. Uh, with a couple of potential clients. The biggest challenge is that our cholesterol is, although very, very far back in the synthesis, is animal-derived. And the cholesterol that all of these companies are using at the moment is synthetic. Uh, we have an R&D program ongoing at the moment for synthetic cholesterol, uh, which is not from an animal-derived source, but from a plant-derived source. So uh, that's how we're attacking that. Unfortunately, they're all using synthetic cholesterol as an adjuvant. So synthetic cholesterol is cheaper, uh, is also cheaper compared to the one that you manufacture? Is that also... Uh, no, synthetic cholesterol is actually probably more expensive because it's more difficult to extract. It's coming from a plant. So the yield out of the, 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 the initial yield is quite low. So uh, the cost will be a little bit higher, at least initially. The benefit of being non-animal derived is that you don't have any risk of BSE or TSE. Although in Europe, BSE and TSE is pretty much exist, extinct. Um, it's a concern for vaccine manufacturers. So uh, that's the advantage of going synthetic cholesterol, not cost. It's uh, BSE and TSE free. Okay. So uh, there is no extraordinary influence on the number right now. So this, uh, these numbers that you're doing would be sustainable. Yeah, these numbers represent steady growth and they represent the plan that we put together six or seven years ago for, for that particular business unit where we were going to move away from uh, a, a, uh, a supplier model to a product owner model and a B2B business model. So instead of giving lots of margin away and, and focusing on on top line, we are working directly with customers and generating more profit. Um, and that represents that strategy. We're still walking that strategy. And level two of that strategy, as I mentioned, is the investment in R&D for new products in that business unit, where there is a tremendous opportunity. <laughs> Pardon me. I missed your earlier comments on uh, the CAPEX. Uh, so uh, basically, I wanted to uh, understand the uh, plan where uh, your Japanese partner is co-investing for an ADC uh, project. So yep. uh, when when that will be commercialized and start reflecting in revenues? Well, it's it's already commercial, and uh, we're we're supplying material to them. Um, which is going into commercial products on one indication in the U.S. Um, this is the one that we've just been validated for by the FDA. We heard uh, a few a week ago, I think, that uh, we'd been successful in passing the audit. Um, that investment is being built at our Bubendorf site at the moment, and it's about halfway through its uh, delivery process. So the construction is about halfway through. That con completion will kind of tie in with the increase in volume that they require um, towards the middle of next year. That's when we hope to have that complete, sort of around about April, May. And that coincides with an increase in volume based on their their targets. So this would be triggered by a new indication approval, that volume expansion? 
Yeah, well, they're launching in the US in November for a different indication than the uh, initial one. So uh, that's for lung cancer. So that was the FDA audit that we had uh, a little while ago. That, that was specifically for that product being launched in the US for treatment of lung cancer. This would be one of the uh, validation products that you would be running this year? Correct. The right understanding? Correct. Okay. That's one of the three that's already been validated. Yes. And uh, finally, just on this uh, EDQM inspection in for India plants, uh, any any timelines you can share? When can we expect that? Ashur, do you want to say? Yeah, yeah, sure. So we shall. Uh, you know, the plan is that uh, we have completed implementation of roughly 80% of what we wanted to. Uh, the rest, 20%, should get completed in the next, uh, I would say, four to five months' time. And after that, we we intimate the EDQM to perform either a remote audit or if they want a physical audit. So, you know, in terms of timeline, we can estimate maybe around uh, Q1 of next year uh, is when it is likely that they might undertake the audit. But, you know, uh, then it depends upon them when they want to do it. Right. Uh, thank you. That helps. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, please press star, then one. Anyone who wishes to ask questions, please press star, then one. Participants who would like to ask questions, please press star, then one. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Okay, so before I hand over to Harshil, um, we very much hope that you are starting to see the delivery of the plans that we put in place a couple of years ago with the business. Um, we are consistently working very hard to keep the pipeline moving, which is the lifeblood of the business, whilst maintaining a focus on some of our products as well. And, and you will see additional investment in the next few years into our product business to ensure that that has a long-term sustainable future. We want to thank you for your continued support and, con and confirm to you that this company is working very, very hard indeed to deliver its promises. Um, hand over to you and then maybe to Sanjay Bay. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Mark. Yes, I would just like to echo what uh, Mark mentioned. Uh, we, we seem to be on the right track. We are putting in the right efforts. Um, and, uh, you know, the EDQM uh, that happened last year, the observations received, we have taken it quite, uh, I would say, positively in order to make sure that, uh, you know, whatever actions need to be undertaken, including upgrading uh, the, the quality software, uh, getting the SAP validated, restructuring the manpower, having a global management team, all of those things are being put in place in order to make sure that we do not have any kind of hiccups in the future uh, for the growth that we are envisaging for the next 5, 10, 20 years. So we're all, uh, you know, the pipeline looks quite robust. Um, you know, the, the expansions that we are doing, they're very much on track. And, uh, you know, we are really excited for the next phase of growth. With that, Sanjay, if you want to add something. Just, uh, just one concluding remark that, uh, uh, as uh, the results uh, have started uh, to show a distinct improvement, we do expect the second half of the current fiscal to be definitely much better, both in terms of uh, the top line, which could be a little moderate growth as compared to first half, but definitely in terms of the bottom line. And then next year, 
with Bavla working with full throttle and uh, the new expansion part of it overseas is also likely to come in production next year. I think we should see that uh, hopefully uh, uh, things will better look much better in 20 to 23. Uh, I think uh, with that, uh, Harshil, uh, you can just uh, uh, conclude the call. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody, and uh, wishing you and your family a very happy Diwali and a prosperous New Year. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Dishman Carbogen Amsis, that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.